only woman before me be my wife, Muriel Van Heslop. <laughs> Today, we have only a bit of time for our morning introduction, for the Queen is due to arrive by royal barge any moment, and we must be at the dock to greet Her Majesty. <laughs> I would like to say, however, welcome on this most auspicious of days, for today we have an event that occurs but once every ten years. Yes, an event without parallel in the annals of sports. Indeed, a once in a lifetime event that but never. Dearest, dearest, if it be held every ten years, is it not hyperbolic to call it once in a lifetime? Oh, <laughs> precious Muriel, I have taken the liberty of researching life expectancy in the Shire, and I can say with certainty that for most of those in attendance, it will indeed be once in a lifetime. Oh. 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 Continue, my pet. Still, I should have trusted to thine integrity. The shy I will not question thee again. The After all, <laughs> no one gives a more meticulously researched speech than thee. Muriel. Take a look. Thank thee. As I was saying today, Stirling has been honoured above all other villages in England. For today, we shall host the Tournament of Champions, the World Cup of Jousting, when national rivalries are set aside and the best of the best compete. Now, the jouster who emerges triumphant... And alive. <laughs> the jouster who emerges triumphant... And the lie will not only return to his home country with the title World's Greatest Jouster, but will also receive this Horsehead Trophy, cast in bronze, donated by none other than the Lord High Treasure, William Cecil Lord Burley himself! For God! But wait! Tis more! More to the victor today! will also go this sack filled with gold as and once was known by an ancient and noble name. However thou mayst call me, as these good people do, Robin Hood. Huzzah! <laughs> oh, fear not, Muriel. He cannot harm us from up here, I think. For all, sir, I shall have thee know that the girl today was donated by none other than the sheriff himself. Hey, I want to stole from the poor. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. I'm sure Sir Philip would never do anything illegal. <laughs> oh, oh, well, perhaps not, Lady Mayoress, but illegal and immoral are two different kettles of fish. Surely thou wilt agree that taking the widow's might, whether to pay Paul or provide prizes, will make the sheriff a veritable camel with regards to the needle's eye. Sorry, what? No, I agree. Sorry. Desist with thy theology, Friar. If thou were to point the finger of immorality, point it at thyself. I assure thee, the good Friar accompanies my band only to guard our immortal soul. Uh, and to guard the ale stars. And to uh, make sure whatever resources we are. Uh, Liberate are given to the most needy. Be good fellow, Von Heslop. Give us that purse for succor of the poor. Surely fame and a lovely statue of prizes are now for these competing jousters. I will not! The Queen herself is due to arrive to witness these festivities, and I would not have a thing that Sterling cannot afford an adequate prize for this most glorious of events. Oh, is it better then that she see the dire straits of the peasantry? Aye. Aye. And the indifference of those in authority. Very well, Lord Mayor. If thou not listen to the whisper of reason, then guard thou thy hearing when reason commences to shout. <laughs> what? Art thou threatening me? Oh, threatening me! Need I remind thee that I be Lord Mayor of the 
until after curfew. But they were just here, and they were there. Not been dipping into the old French brandy again to fortify thyself for the day, I hope. Oh, certainly not. Oh, oh Sir Philip, they were there. That, that horrible Robin Hood and his terrible companions. That Friar Tuck called me an awful name. At, at, at least I think he did. Robin Hood? He dares show his face on this day all day. He has threatened to disrupt the tournament. He shall ruin everything. Damn the tournament. You! There's more at stake today than an harass of horsemen come to cross lances for the sake of bragging rights in the taverns of Christendom. What could be more important than the World Cup of Toasting? My future happiness. <laughs> Thou knowest that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth brings with her in her train today the loveliest and richest heiress in all of England, the Lady Marion Fitzwalter, and that said Lady Marion was promised to me by her father shortly before he died. Today is to be our first meeting since our betrothal and our wedding day. Yeah. Wedding? How lovely! Oh, dearest Monty, does thou remember our wedding day? As if twere yesterday, my dear, thou wert all in white. I was dressed in blue. We dined on roast boar. It was mutton. Very romantic, I'm sure, but save the tale for thy memoir. Yes, tis my wedding and my happiness that is of concern now. People of sterling and assorted rabble. Today is a very important day for our Shire, and we must not allow a group of malcontents to sully our reputation. I therefore charge ye all to be on the lookout for this Robin Hood and his associates, and to inform me or my men of any and all suspicious activity. I further charge ye to be charming, cheerful, and picturesque should ye be approached by any of the visiting dignitaries. If all goes according to plan, then my beneficence shall continue to drop upon thee like warm summer rain. If, however, aught goeth awry, then beware the hail of hell my wrath shall provoke. <laughs> <laughs> I am certain the people will be most cooperative city. Oh, no one would wish to see thy special day so dear. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> Then I am in my heaven, and all is right with the world as it should be. <laughs> oh, Monty! Monty, it is time! Ah! And the queen of the queen of the rest! I know! What do I do? What do I do? We need this! That way! Turn it off! Go, go, go! Go! Remember! Happy, cheerful, picturesque! Guards, open the gate! 